Lately, I've been making a lot of Italian food. Um, usually, I, I you know I'll, I'll find a recipe or or an, and I'll make several variations over it over the course of a couple of meals to really come up with I think with what I think is the perfect recipe. At 800 degrees, we've got a pretty unique meat slicer. Um, our slicer is made for prosciutto specifically, but of course you can slice any kind of meat on it you want. Um, but it's patterned after a very old, 100 year old Italian design. And the design came about because this was, it was invented before there was uh, access to a lot of electricity. So the whole slicer is manually operated with the turn of a crank. So turning the handle on the slicer not only turns the blade this way, but it also moves the meat back and forth against the blade and pushes it forward slowly. So one turn of the crank gives us three different actions. Now what's special about this is instead of the blade spinning around at a million miles an hour, the blade's spinning very slowly. So it doesn't melt any of the fat on the prosciutto and leaves it all intact. And of course, the fat is the best part. At 800 degrees, our slicer is pretty expensive. Now these things will last over 100 years if well maintained. This one costs about $8,000. So it's not something you're gonna buy for your house. But when you go to your butcher or your cheese shop or your deli counter, they'll have great slicers back there too. And you can request that whatever meat you're buying, whether it's prosciutto or uh, great salami, that they slice it for you, of course. Um, yeah, usually for pizza, you want to go pretty thin. You can ask them to do it on a setting one or two, and they'll know what that means. You get a nice, thinly sliced prosciutto. With great prosciutto, uh, the fat's considered the best part because the fat really carries the flavor of the pork. And with great prosciutto, there's only two ingredients, pork and salt, and thyme. So you need to pick really good animals that are raised right, that eat outdoors, that have a chance to root in the grass and live in the sun. Um, so that their flesh takes on a lot of the beautiful flavors of the farm, the, the terroir as we call it. Uh, from there, the legs are taken, they're salted, and then they're left to dry for 18 months or more. So really the fat concentrates that flavor. And uh, in, in the prosciutto eating cultures of the world, the fat's always considered the best part. And in a great prosciutto, it should be a little bit creamy, slightly sweet, slightly nutty, and with uh, even some of the best of them, you can almost taste uh, through them the corn and the acorns and the other great things that the, the pig's been fed.